G'day legends, I hope you're all awesome. I just want to preface today's episode with a little quote from the eminent philosopher Ingve J. Malmsteen. How can less be more? More is more. Well, if we're dialing in tones on something like a modern modeler, I've got an FM9 open at the moment, uh, more can really be more. There's more choices, there's more flexibility, there's more control over your tone and your dynamics, but sometimes that seeming abundance actually leads to another phenomena called option paralysis, where you can dial in a hundred variations of the same sound and then not be confident enough to choose any one of them. So what I've suggested to some of my students who own uh, various modelers when it comes to this, where they're saying they're spending more time tweaking than playing is this, that the way we want to combat this is to make a series of very quick choices in here and to limit the number of options available to us. So that's just playing into human psychology there. The idea is that often when you make a quick decision, it can be a very satisfying decision and that sometimes human beings can be more creative when they've got, uh, you know, sort of more limitations around what they're doing. So if you're somebody who struggles with option paralysis, this approach may help. If you're somebody who doesn't, well, you might find this interesting anyway. So the first thing that I want you to do is to back up your device. So in FM9 Edit, you can go to Tools, Fractal Bot, and you can go to Receive Mode and do a full backup. Back everything up because you don't want to lose anything. But once you've backed everything up, you go into the presets and you delete everything. Delete the factory presets, delete every preset you've made, just start from fresh. So you can see in here, I've got 500 plus presets. They're all empty except for this one, which I've called one rig to rule them all. Do the same with the factory cabs. I've deleted, sorry, not factory cabs, the user cabs. You can't delete the factory cabs, but we're going to ignore them anyway. I've got rid of all the cabs except for one, my favorite IR, LTTV Mix 7. You can see there's nothing else in the user cab section over here. So I've just got that in there. Set the high cut and low cut wherever you like it and just forget about it. I've gone with 60 hertz and 8K with a 12 dB slope. The next thing is we're just gonna go for a clean crunch and a lead amp in here. So we're gonna use three channels on the amp block. Basically choose any Fendery amp and dial it in for your guitar. So this is a Les Paul with Martin A. Smith style PAFs. I've gone with the Band Commander clean model on here. Uh, I'm just gonna dial it in really quickly for the neck pickup on here. <laughs> What I'm aiming for there is when I play those uh, kind of clean arpeggios and hopefully play them a little better in the future than I just did there, uh, that it's really clean and sparkly. And then when I dig in, it just starts to break up a little bit. So that's fine. We're going to roll with that. Totally cool. I've gone for a Marshall style thing for my crunch sound. Any of the Marshall models or their derivatives, the Atomica High, the Cameron CCV, the Friedmans in there at stock settings sound great. The FAS crunch sounds great. I have gone with Brit 800 mod. Uh, basically, I want it to sound like something off a Michael Schenker album. <laughs> You might want to go for that kind of ACDC sound instead. Just grab some kind of Marshall thing, slap it into channel B, and then channel C, whatever your favorite high gain thing is. If you like the smooth Dumble kind of thing, one of the ODS models, I like the Mark series thing. So I've got my favorite amp, USA Lead Mid Gain. Go and grab uh, the multitude of presets that I've shared on Xchange using this amp. It's pretty much those settings. Let's just have a listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> All 
Alrighty, we've got the amp and the cab sorted. I like to stay on the dirty side of things now. Find a reverb that you like in here. So uh, for electric guitar, like rooms, plates and halls are generally pretty satisfying. I like the London plate. I think it's really easy to dial in, maybe like 1.5 seconds of reverb and uh, bring the mix either up or down depending on your taste. But if you want a really big ambient wash, go for it. This is your preset, do whatever you want. I like just a little bit of sauce on there. Perfect, I've got a reverb in there. That's the only reverb I'm gonna use for my lead sound on a big stereo delay. So I'm gonna go to the delay block I could use the multi-tap delay. There's some pretty great delays in there as well. Like the Aurora delay is fantastic, but I'm gonna go stereo BBD. I'll just set the left-right time ratio to 75%. I like my delays tempo synced as well. So we'll set the tempo to be a quarter note. By having the left-right time ratio at 75%, I've now got a quarter note and a dotted eighth note delay. That's a pretty cool trick. And mix to taste, I like this pretty wet. So I'll go 30%. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> So I've got a delay, I've kind of got my lead sound sorted. I'm pretty stoked with that. Let's go back to the crunch sound now. What I wouldn't mind on the crunch sound is the ability to give it a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a drive block in front of the amp. Uh, let's go with, I don't know, I've got this clon style thing in front of here. So maybe gain low, level high. Let's just see if that gives it a little bit of a kick in front. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And let's see if that works well with channel A. I'm trying to just kind of get a drive block that does both things in here. I might bring the amount of drive up and the level down a little bit if I need it. a little boost in front of that. I like a compressor and a wah and then some kind of wobbly thing. So just choose between a flanger chorus and a phaser and stick to it. Uh, for a compressor, you know, the stock studio feed forward with the ratio at four, I think is fantastic. <laughs> very nice there. I'm going to just use a wah that I've got saved in my blocks library over here. The blocks li library is kind of a little cheat, isn't it? Because I said delete everything, but still got the blocks going on. Let's just uh, right click control and set that to I am going with pedal number one. <laughs> finally a phaser. I mean, there's a reason the phase 90 is preeminent on so many boards. So we just go with the script 90, turn the rate down a little bit. Let's actually hear the uh, kind of Marshall-y channel over here with this. I'll turn the compressor off. <laughs> Now, if you're happy with all of those sounds, 
you're going to have to dial them in slightly different for different guitars, and that's kind of the point. So don't worry too much about making this work with every single guitar. Just dial it in for one guitar. If you plug a Strat in next time, tweak the knobs on each of the amps and get it right for the Strat. But you can arrange these into scenes. Like if you're on an FM3, make three scenes with each of your favorite effects on or off in each scene. Or if you're on an FM9 or an FC12 with an Axe FX3, try this layout over here. I've got the top three right buttons over here set up so that they're selecting channel A, B, or C on the app. I've given them custom names to match the function on there. And then you just take each of your effects and map them to their own foot switch on there. Treat it like a traditional pedal board where you can just turn things on and off. I've got tap tempo and hold for tuner in the far right. That's a nice little kind of, uh, you know, quality of life addition that you can get really easily with a fractal or most other devices will do that as well. That way, if I want to, I can just go, hey, look, I'm set up. I've got a three channel amp. I've got my clean amp. Finally, I've got my big greasy lead amp. I'm going to turn a delay on with that one as well. And then I can kick a phaser in or use the wah. Then the most important thing is to uh, turn FM9 edit off and move your chair back so that you can't reach your keyboard or reach the mouse and just play your guitar really loud and enjoy it. In that case, you know, more is going to be more when it comes to volume and when it comes to like the amount of volume that you put into practice, the number of hours you spend playing the guitar and enjoying the guitar and, you know, playing riffs, writing riffs, learning new songs, all that kind of fun stuff. Don't lose sight of the big picture with it where, you know, you've got a clean crunch and lead, you're probably going to be pretty happy. Uh, this approach obviously isn't for everybody. I'm not saying abandon the quest for amazing character tones and, you know, I've got plenty of other tutorials addressing that, but this video, especially if you have problems with these devices, keep in mind that it's not necessarily a shortcoming of the hardware or the software. It's kind of just a quirk of human nature and human psychology. We all have those things where we're presented with too many choices and we kind of um and ah between all of them. And no matter what choice we make, it's not going to be satisfying. So you lean into that idea of like a quick choice is a satisfying choice and you try to limit the number of options you have and then you just go out and just thrash the living daylights out of your guitar and uh, hopefully have some fun or don't thrash the living daylights out of your guitar. Just, you know, caress it and finesse it and do all those kind of things. Play the style of music that makes you really, really happy. That's uh, kind of the important thing there, isn't it? There's no real, you know, oh, well, that's a bad tone. All of these things are very, very dependent on context. So make the context your enjoyment. Try this approach, stick to the one preset, and let me know what you think. This may not work. This may be a disaster for you. You may actually hate the limitations that come in there, in which case you can just keep using these devices the way you've always used them. Let me know either way. I mean, try this for a day or a week otherwise and see how you like it. Because you did a backup, like I told you at the start, uh, then you can always roll back. It's totally fine. Sometimes these approaches can be very, very fulfilling. Having a preset for every single song in the world can be pretty fulfilling as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, if you want to listen to some music that I made, I'll link that in the video description. Get my free IR down there and support the channel in a bunch of other ways. Otherwise, have a great day. Take it easy and I'll see you next time.